Well, Coasters, uh, I'm in the back of uh, Kamara at the moment with uh, Chris Birchfield, and Chris has been showing us his operation up up there. Chris, um, beautiful weather today. Well, it's not too bad, is it? Oh, it's all right. It's not raining. <laughs> <laughs> which which is always good. Yeah. Chris, how long have you been mining? Oh, about 20 years, I think, on and off. So did you start straight out of school, or did, what did you do? Uh, I sort of worked for Dad Mining before I left school. Yeah. Um, just in the school holidays and that sort of thing. And then uh, I went away and did a few other things for a while, and then sort of come back to it. So how old were you when you got your first drive of a digger? Uh, 14, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. you got yeah. to learn young. Oh, you <laughs> do, you do, of course. Yeah. You'd have to. Mm. Now, you're married now. Mm -hmm. And yeah. how many kids? Uh, two kids. Two kids? Yeah, one girl, one boy. Awesome. Mm. And Sarah's your wife? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I see. Her, I, I don't see her personally, but I see a bit of her on uh, social media. Yeah. She's very active. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things that people don't, uh, don't realise is just how important uh, the staff on a mining operation are. Mm -hmm. You know, they've all got kids. Mm. Yep. Um, I guess your kids go to school? Yeah, they do. Yep. Yeah, they go to Corroy School. So uh, it's, you know, miners, we all have families, and it's those kids which are going to school. We're putting all our, our money back into the economy and that sort of thing. Um, it's not going offshore, you know, we're spending it locally. So you buy at um, the local supermarket? Yeah, exactly. You know, um, all of this, this money goes into the economy, um, and it, it really employs a lot of people. Um, it's hard to get a, a, an accurate number of how many employees we've got. Sorry, I'll just turn the radio off. Um, because a lot of gold mines sort of they're at the, the back of beyond somewhere yep. and, and there's you know, um, you know a lot of staff working on mines you don't really know about um, but uh, yeah a lot of them keep a low profile I, I, I was I was interested Chris to read a report recently about um, the way they use the statistics mm. to tell you how many teachers you've got at your school mm. um, you know so obviously every every child that goes to a school is helping sustain the number of teachers you've got there. Yep. Um, also, the number of policemen. Yeah. They, like everything relates to people who are actually out there working. Yeah, that's right. And I think it's only about one out of every four or five people is actually doing something to earn money for the country, to earn export dollars. And that's not to sort of belittle the, the other people in other occupations. You, know, you need uh, police and, and nurses and doctors and all that sort of thing. But it's only you know, one out of every five of us which is doing something like what we're doing now in the, in the primary industries, um, earning money for the country. Money it, can only go around so many times. You know, got to, got it's, to. Uh, it's a bit frightening, isn't it, when you look at uh, how many people the state are paying mm. compared with the worker bees, which is what I always call them. Yeah. You, know, the, the, you guys in the mining sector, mm. uh, the fishermen, yep. the farmers, yep. the forestry, all that real stuff. Yeah, anyone in the primary sector seems to be under attack at the moment by this government. Um, so long term that's not really sustainable, I don't think. Um, money has to come from somewhere, it's not going not gonna to grow on trees. Um, gold mining is basically new money coming into the, the economy. We're, we're just, you know, it comes out of the ground, it's already here, um, the gold's here, we need to get at it. Yeah, I read a report where there was something like forty million dollars worth of uh, alluvial gold recovered uh, last year on the coast. Mm -hmm. Did you get a fair bit of that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I won't confirm or deny. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, hey coast is he's, he's a gold miner. Mm. <laughs> now, tell me the the uh, political environment, mm. and I know that we're not allowed to talk about politics, but mm. political environment for the mining sector at the moment. What's it feel like? Not very good, really. Uh, I can sympathise with how farmers feel and the petroleum industry. Uh, I don't think we're getting treated very fairly at all. Uh, basically, if the status quo remains, we're not going to be around for much longer. Um, yeah, I don't really understand why, but the primary sector is being, being clobbered, and I think it's just there's a lot of green ideology starting to sneak into uh, government departments. And if you think of it, Bruce, there's 32,600 or thereabouts people on the west coast. There's 80,000 forest and bird members in New Zealand. So a lot of those people have got into jobs and bureaucracy and that sort of thing. And it, it wouldn't surprise me if someone that you're dealing with in Wellington trying to process your minerals permit or whatever is working for forest and bird. Um, and they just anti any kind of development, really. It's bizarre. The, the, the headlines over the last, well, the last month, really, um, 
have been a bit a bit difficult. I mean, this latest one where the hydro application for Griffin Creek was mm. suddenly, mm. I mean, it's been approved mm. because they had a variation. Suddenly, these critters from somewhere have come out of the woodwork. Mm. Mm. Yeah, well, it seems like these sorts of things get knocked back on, on any pretext at all. Um, if that doesn't stack up, then, then what is acceptable? You know, you've only got to look at the, the white uh, scheme. Um, you know, th there was no reason really for, for knocking that back. Um, if, we, if we can't build a, a hydro scheme like that, then we're, we're really in trouble in this country. We just can't keep saying no to things all the time. And, What's, uh, do, do you get the feeling that uh, hydro for the west coast is a bit of a dirty word for some reason? And I, I just can't get my head around why. Well, I don't really know why either, Bruce. Um, uh, well, we need electricity. Um, the Greens will tell you that we need to conserve electricity rather than producing more. That's not really a solution. Um, we end up with energy poverty. Um, we're going to be needing rivers dammed up for hydroelectricity for a long time. We're going to need coal for a long time. Uh, you know, unless we want nuclear, but they're not going to want that. So we've got we've got to be real about it. Um, we need energy, and we've got all these rivers on the coast. We don't need to dam every one of them up, but. It shouldn't have been such a contentious issue that one of them could have been put aside for hydro generation. Well, it, well of course, that the Waitahara didn't even have a dam; it was run of river, mm. which was, which, and of course, Griffin Creek's exactly the same. Mm. So that yeah. you, nothing actually changes. Uh, what a great thing, though, you know, to be generating electricity from from hydro. You know, we should have been jumping at every opportunity really to to do that and. Uh, we're going to need more electricity. If the government does what it wants to do and bans coal burners, well, think of all the people that have got wet back fires. You know, where is that energy going to come from to, to heat that water? I don't think there would be enough power in the, the grid to, um, to power you know, that, that water heating. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. We're going to need uh, power for electric cars soon, if that's the way of the future. Uh, where's the power going to come from? It's, interesting. it's, it's a real question, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Solar isn't really an option for New Zealand as well. You know, um, I know they'll hold solar up as a as an example to you know, all, their, all their problems. But um, well, you can't you can't uh, build a solar panel without coal. Well, that's right. It's just yep. not possible to do. Yeah. Now, how, how do you find getting staff? Oh, not too bad. Yep. But it's still pretty good. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, easy. But most um, most West Coasters can turn their hand to any sort of job. It doesn't matter if they've been driving a truck or whatever. They know a little bit about gold mining and they can adapt to it pretty easy or whatever, and, and vice versa. Or they can go fishing or whatever or, or move around. And uh, most people here yeah, are pretty good workers, I think, and, and pretty honest. Can you so, see your kids being involved in the mining sector? No, no, I don't think so. So where, where's the uh, where's the Birchfield uh, dynasty in, in another 50 years? You know, you look back at Max's day and mm. he was one of the uh, a major contractor. Mm. And did some amazing things, you know, I mean, mm. really did. Mm. So, wh what's next? Oh, where, where are we going? Uh, I can't answer that, I don't really know. Um, I can't really predict the way things are going to be five or ten years in the future, to be honest. So, so I can't really uh, foresee what's going to happen 50 years' time. Um, I don't know. Uh, I hope uh, we're still uh, living uh, life the way we do on the West Coast. We're still good at our lifestyle. Um, yeah, and we can live here. Um, It'd be good to think that uh, our elderly will be able to continue to mm. light the fire and keep uh, with coal and keep warm at night. Yes, yeah, so well that's that's another issue as well, isn't it? We need uh, cheap heating and um, you know people uh, need coal and, and wood to, um, to heat their homes. Uh, electricity isn't an option for everyone. Um, it's pointless getting a government subsidy to put a space, uh, a heat pump into the house if you can't afford to run it. And uh, You've only got to look at the electricity bill. You look at how much you're paying per unit for electricity um, and what you're going to pay per unit from a coal fire. There's, there's no no comparison at all. Coal is by far and away the cheapest option. So I'm probably a little bit biased, but um, that's, that's how it is. Those are the facts. I, th they are the facts. And look, mm. I look at the fact that it costs three quarters of a cent to produce a kilowatt of power at Manapuri mm. and... When I get my bill, I'm paying 28 cents mm. per kilowatt, and and you know, yeah. shucks! Imagine what it's doing to some households. Mm. Yes, yeah, it's, it's uh, there's a bit of a, a spread there, isn't there? Like it's uh, 
Well, someone's I mean, making a buck. Yeah, they are. They seem to be. Um, I mean, I know a lot of it's lost in transmission and that sort of thing, but it's a pretty big markup. You know, it'd be good to think that uh, you know I could sell a gram of gold for let's say twenty eight bucks, and it only cost me um, half a cent to or, or one dollar to produce it. Yeah, whatever, wouldn't it be awesome? Times. Yeah, it'd be pretty good. <laughs> uh, it? now, yeah. they, look, they reckon you can do that with a metal detector in Australia. In the oh, middle yeah, of the desert. Okay. Yeah, I've seen those programs, yeah. but yeah, I don't know what to believe. <laughs> no. yeah, I think it's just done for TV. I, yeah. I think it is. I yeah. think it is. Yeah. Well, look, Chris, hey, thanks for your time. That's really cool. appreciate it. No, good to now, talk to you. hey, look, I just got something that I want to bounce off you while I've got you on film here. Mm-hmm. Do you think it's time for Chris Birchfield to be thinking politics at a local level? <laughs> no, 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 don't laugh. Don't laugh. I'm, I'm serious. Look, mm. we've got a whole lot of people like your father, mm. myself. There's, there's a whole lot of people that are in that. 70 a year up you know 70 year old uh, range mm. and it's time for the for the young ones to come through uh, yeah i suppose yeah you guys are getting on a bit um <laughs> Gee, good on you <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna edit that <laughs> yeah but uh i look at some of the, the younger ones that are coming through like tanya gibson's doing a, a great job yeah she is yeah. That, so i don't know maybe it's something i'd think about later on but uh i've got my hands full at the moment but yeah some of us youngish ones sort of need to be thinking about it I guess I don't know. well look uh, look on that note mm. while I've got you there uh, and got you recorded because I think I think it's young people like yourself they're very experienced mm. and have got the energy mm. that the coast needs mm. otherwise yeah. we're all going to be serving coffee mm-hmm. to someone yeah and uh, I don't think that's that's where we want we need to go yeah. Chris thanks so much for your time mm-hmm. uh, give my regards to Sarah and the yep, kids. Yep. And uh, have a great day. Thanks, Bruce. Good to talk to you.